In this video segment for the Grand View Build House for Homes, we're going to take a look at the master bath. I'm going to step back, redraw the walls, create the floor plan dimensions. Then I'm going to move in and create the vanities using the cabinet tool. We'll place the fixtures. I'm going to go through the steps in creating the shower. We'll go through the wall elevations. And then finally, I'm going to take a look at the plan drawings. With the plan drawings, I'm going to send out the rendering of the room. I'm going to show you how to place each one of the wall elevations, some of the material selections for the tiles, the cabinet schedule, and then the floor plan with all of the dimensions. Let's go into the plan and get started. Now in the blank plan, the first thing I've done is I've changed my layer set to the kitchen and bath set. You can see in my title bar. My annotations, if you're using the Premier version, I've set it NKBA annotations. And then I built one called Large. As I draw my walls, you'll be able to see very large temporary dimensions as I draw those walls out. Using the wall tool, I'm going to begin with an interior wall. And I'm going to create the shape or the footprint for the room. I'm just going to hold my right mouse button down and I'm going to click and draw these walls out. I'll just kind of come in here. I'm not going to worry too much about the dimensions until we finish this up. So again, I'm just kind of clicking with my left mouse button and then we'll just kind of shape in the room. Once you've enclosed the room and you click in the middle of it, you'll notice a highlight, which means you've formed a room. And there's an edit tool on the bottom that I use for the dimensioning of the floor plan called the NKBA Automatic Dimensions. Once you place these dimensions, you can come in here and move the wall or you can highlight a dimension and make those changes. Before I do that, I'm going to select a handful of these walls and convert them to 6 inch walls. So I'm just going to hold my shift key down. Once they're all selected, I'm going to go ahead and open them up by double clicking on them. To change those three walls on the wall types panel, I'm going to choose an interior 6 wall. Once that's selected, I can now make my way around and square up the dimensions. I do this in a clockwise fashion put in 283.5 and just make my way around the plan. So I usually select the wall perpendicular. This wall is correct at 132 and then just make the dimension setting. In this case I'm going to put in 8 feet or 96 inches and then I'll go ahead and speed through this so you can just kind of watch how I've done it. Okay once I'm done I'll go ahead and click inside the room, refresh those dimensions and then let's take a look at what we have in the 3D view. Now in the 3D view, notice that the baseboard and the wall material are probably not what you want in your bathroom. Let's go ahead and select inside the room, open up the dialog, and the first thing I'm going to do is change the room type to a master bath. And then in the molding section, I'm going to go ahead and uncheck this button and remove it. Now you notice when we did that, the flooring material changed automatically. In my defaults, underneath the floors and rooms, you can come in here on your room types and for your master bath, in this case, if I hit edit, you can see that on my floor structure that I actually have a material that's called ashwood. So you can actually set up for several different room types in your dialogues, different material types. So now you can separate your master bath, your bathrooms, your kitchens, your pantries and set up different materials, you can save those in your profile plan. And then when you name your rooms, they have the exact material you want. Let's finish adding the rest of the walls in the bathroom. I'm going to grab this wall and I'm just going to snap it to the back wall in here. And then I'll do the same thing on this side. We'll go ahead and pull this wall out a little bit and we'll use this extra diamond and just snap that back into this area. And then using the wall tool, let's go ahead and use our interior wall tool for the water closet. And then we'll go back into the plan view and make sure these dimensions work out. And some of these walls I'm going to go ahead and change to be interior six walls for the venting of the toilet. In this one, let's go ahead and change that to an interior six wall. So I'll just set that to be an interior six. And then a couple of these other walls I'm going to change back to an interior four. This one I need to create a break at this intersection using the break tool up in my menu. I'm going to go ahead and create a break simply by clicking in here. And now I can shift click both of these walls and again we'll change that to an interior four wall. To position these walls I'm going to use my dimension tool and earlier in the video when we select it inside the room and then use the tool for automatic NKBA dimensions I think that's more work actually than clicking in each one of these rooms. I'm going to select the initial automatic dimension that was placed at the top and I'm just going to slide that up. Now here's a note when you modify an automatic dimension and you re-execute the command it will duplicate the dimensions because this thing thinks it's a manually edited dimension. I'm going to change my dimension tool to the 
interior dimension. And now I'm just going to drag a dimension through this way. And I'm going to go ahead and drag a dimension through this way. And that's going to give me enough of the information that I need. Let's go ahead and clean this up a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and pull this up. And we'll go ahead and pull this one over. And again, let's go ahead and slide this one out. And we'll go ahead and pull this one out here a little bit. Figure out if that's where we want it. And let's go ahead and do our dimensioning in here. Now for this wall in here, it's 61 inches. That's correct. This wall over here, I'm going to go ahead and select and I want this dimension in here to be 86 and a half and then on this dimension we're going to set this at 36 and a half. Now let's take these dimensions over here. This may make more sense to slide this dimension back near the water closet and I'm going to delete the initial automatic dimension. And let's go ahead and set these. I'm going to click on this dimension, set this dimension at uh, 75 inches. Now that sets the different walls. I'm going to go ahead and place the doors and windows and we'll update the dimensions from here. Let me switch back over to the 3D view and you can see exactly how I'm going to place these windows. Let's just go ahead and click in each one of the rooms where we want the windows to appear and then we'll make the modifications. Let's begin over here in the shower area. Let's double click and open up that window and make the changes. Now for this window, I'm going to change this to be a single hopper. You'll notice each time we do something, you'll get a preview update. We'll set the width of it to be 30 and then the height of it to be 22. And I'm going to try and leave all of my windows at the same floor to top at 96 and 3 8. On the grid lines, I want to remove those. You'll find those underneath the lights component. I'm just going to come in here and we'll zero those out. So you can see the preview of it. We'll go ahead and close that dialog. You can use a center in room tool if you want. There's a center in room in the lower edit menu. Now for the next window, let's go ahead and make some changes in here. Again, we'll start on the grids. This is leaving off on the last panel we were on. Get rid of the grids. On the general panel, let's make this a fixed glass window. And then on the width at 48 by 54. And for this window, let's go ahead and make sure when we press the tab key that updates. Floor to bottom is at 42 and 3 eighths. Now this window is going to be near the tub and that requires tempered glass. You can actually select that in the options panel. And then when you run your schedule, that will update accordingly. For the window in the water closet, let's just remove that. It's going to be very similar to the one from the shower. I'm going to copy, control C on the keyboard, control V, and I'm just going to click in here. And we'll go ahead and make some of the setting changes. For this window, we'll make it just 22 inches to fit the room. And again, make sure the floor to top is also at the bottom. For some of these windows, um, there are cases where I'll change the framing and override the header. Some of these may require a big header, not these certainly, but you can come in here and override that. My default header is a 2 by 10, but Depending on what your floor to top may be, you may, if you move that too high and your header value, you can always crush that. So I like to make sure that I verify that. Now for this last window, let's go ahead and make changes to this one. So I'm going to make that a fixed glass window that's 22 by 22. Then I'm going to go in and remove the lights out of this window as well. So we'll just come in here and zero those out. And you see the preview of it and now that becomes a 22 by 22 window. Zoom in here a little bit. I'm going to use the copy button down here in the edit menu and I'm going to slide a copy of this and while I'm doing that I'm just going to press the tab key and then I'm going to go ahead and enter a value of 24 inches in here and then I'm going to shift click both of those windows when they're both highlighted up here in the edit menu is a make block which is a mold unit which is if you buy that window from the manufacturer as a single unit you'll want to treat it that way it will frame that way and it will show up in your schedule that way with those windows selected let's hit control C or the copy button here and I'm going to reflect it around the center of this room and we'll place it on the other side. Now one last window, let's go into our plan view here. One last window we need is over the vanity over in this area and let's make a change to this one. Let's open it up. In this case I do want lights and we're going to change that to be two across and then four. You'll see the definition of four actually adjusts where that shows up in here. For the sizing, we'll change the width and then the height. We'll go ahead and set that to be a four foot window. Down in this area is where you can change the hinging. If you want to switch this hinging around, you can switch the hinging for that casement window. And I think that's all the windows we need. Now before I update the dimensions for the openings for the windows, let's place the doors. Using the door tool, let's come in here and we'll place a door for the closet. Now before I click and place this, if I just kind of move to either side of the wall, it's going to change the hinge side. If I left click and hold my mouse down, I can actually shift 
the position, the handing of the door, just by holding that mouse button down and moving it. So again, the way that works is you mouse over where you want the door. You kind of then highlight which side of the wall you want. Then you click keep your mouse button down and then you just slide it over and then release it and it will place the door handing and which hinge side it's going to be on. Now these doors you can select there's a diamond in here you can pull it up that's also a setting if you go in here and you can change what that swing angle is. Now next for the water closet let's choose our pocket door. We'll come down here select and place our pocket door. Now when you place these pocket doors you can actually select it and you'll find the same tool we were looking at by shift and change the hinge side down here in your edit menu. So you can switch on that. If it's too close you're going to find insufficient room. You may need to pull that down a little bit and then you can then change it so you can get the hinge side in. I want to make sure that that dimension is 34 inches for that pocket door. That looks okay. And now we have those objects placed. Now if I switch over to the 3D view, you're going to notice the door on the right is actually a glass door. And in Chief Architect, it assumes if there's no walls beyond that, that's an exterior door. What I'm going to do is I'm going to override that. Let's go ahead and open up the specifications for that door and make some changes in here. Let's change the door style out of the library using the library. And if I traverse the tree down here under the architectural doors and doorways, I'm just going to use the same exact interior door that we have for the rest of those. And then I'm going to go ahead and set the width of this door to be 34 inches. Now to dimension these openings, let's zoom in here. And I've selected my dimension tool out of the menu. And if I come in here and I just draw one small dimension in here, let's go ahead and draw it through the uh, through the window. I'm going to draw it on this side as well. Now typically if you're an interior designer, if you notice the difference, the dimension is going to the interior casing when I draw the dimension on the inside, and it's going to the outside casing when I draw it on the outside. So let me go ahead and delete the dimension on the outside and we'll zoom out a little bit. And I'm going to go ahead and drag that dimension from the inside of the wall so we pick up the interior casing through here and it's going to pick up a few other dimensions. And I'm going to go ahead and pull that up above the wall so we can kind of clean this up a little bit. And if you double click on that dimension, one of the things you can do is you can actually click this suppress wall widths in here so you don't see the wall widths in there. And that will clean that up quite a bit. Now as far as how you want to clean this up, it's a matter of kind of scrolling through here. Sometimes what I'll do on these is I'll just click on this little move handle and slide it around so that it's not stepping on the extension line. But I like to also use and kind of I typically have my crosshairs on and align those up so the four and the five are aligned. But I don't have the crosshairs on for the videos because it adds a lot of noise. So that's how I usually will dimension those. I'll draw it on the inside of the wall in a case that the casing is different on the inside and the outside. So let's go ahead and let's run more and more dimension through here and we'll get the dimension set up. And again, just kind of come in here. This is a very small area in here and maybe what you want to do is first of all let's turn off the suppress, turn on suppress wall widths so we don't see that noise and you can see where those dimensions are and you notice that we have 13 sixteenths of an inch so what I'm going to do is just kind of come in here and add some dimension on here. I'll highlight the door and click on the dimension, enter in the value you want, do the same thing over here, select the door, highlight the dimension, put in the value. Let's go ahead and put in eight and a half in this case. Let me fill the screen, F6 on the keyboard, and then you can then clean up your dimensions as you need to. Now when we put the fixtures in, you typically will want your center line for your fixture in your plan view. This can get a little bit noisy, but we'll go through that when we place our fixtures. The next thing I want to do is take a look at creating a shower in the room that I've highlighted. You can see this in the 3D view. Right now I have a complete solid wall that goes across the shower. I'm going to select that wall and using the break tool once it's selected up in the upper menu, I'm going to go ahead and create a break right at this wall intersection and I'm going to go ahead and create another break in this area. With that wall segment selected, I'm going to go ahead and set that wall segment to be invisible. Now a doorway could be used here, but I want this to go the entire length of that floor to ceiling area. And I'm going to set that to be 32 inches with my dimensions in the floor plan view. But before I do that, what I want to do is I want to show you a couple of different approaches to create a half wall with tile, a cap, and glass on top of it. 
Now you can see in my completed rendering effectively what I'm going to do and I'm going to show you two different ways to complete this wall. So let's go through the steps. The last one will be my recommended approach. Now the first way you can do that is in your wall properties you can change this to what's called a pony wall. So underneath the wall types is a pony wall setting. The lower wall type let's go ahead and set that to be an interior four wall and the upper wall type let's go ahead and set that to be a glass shower wall. And you can actually change the alignment alignment down here. Align pony wall at the main layer which is the stud. The center of the wall. Let's see if we can zoom in here and you can kind of see what's going on. Center of the wall, inner surface, outer surface, whatever you'd prefer to do it. And then to display in the plan view you can pick the upper wall or the lower wall. If you're going to use this approach I recommend you use the lower wall. That's the thickest of the two wall types. Let's go ahead and close this and take a look and see what we have. Let's zoom in and take a look here. A couple of issues. One, you see the cap on the top of this wall is a 2 by 4 So we're going to have to use a polyline solid to take care of that. You can draw a polyline solid in your plan view. If we select this wall, let's go back in and see what the height of it is. Right now that wall height is 48 inches. So when I draw my, 40, my polyline solid for the top cap, I'll set that at 48 inches. The other issue that I want you to be aware of is in the floor plan view, when you zoom in, as I mentioned, you can only see either the upper portion of the wall, or in this case we've displayed the lower portion of the wall indicated right here. You only see one of those segments of the wall. Now let's show, let's go through, I'm going to use a polyline solid. We'll make this kind of large so you can see the process. And I'm going to go ahead and set the height of that from the finished floor, let's go ahead and set the floor to top at uh, 48 and a half inches. You may need to adjust that slightly and then you can kind of come in here. We'll slide that in a little bit. Probably want to give yourself a half inch overhang. You can use your temporary dimensions back in the camera view. You can see how you've created that top plate. You go into the library browser and you make the material change. And you can also make the material change on that by just clicking and placing it on the wall. Now the preferred approach, I'm going to hit undo a couple times. I'm going to show you the way that I actually would draw this wall because I like to see it in the upper view. And um, so let me hit undo a couple times. I would actually use a half wall tool and you can convert a full wall if you open this up and convert it into a railing wall and set the dimensions and set the cap on it. It's actually just easier to draw that from scratch. Let me just hit the delete key here. Underneath the wall tool you'll find a half straight wall tool. It already has a cap on it. Let's just come in here. We'll draw this in place. And when you're finished drawing it already has a nice cap on it. And you can go into the material painter again and you can change that material. Now this is actually just a railing wall. If you go back in here the railing's selected. And if you come down the rail style is just solid. And then on the newels and balusters panel if I change that to 42 inches in height it will automatically adjust the wall height in that area. Now that's the preferred approach that I use to create that half wall. To create the glass on there I'll just use a polyline solid and I'll do that in an elevation view. Let's go back into the floor plan view and I'm just going to use what's called a back clip elevation view versus a wall elevation so I can actually see right through the entire wall. Once I've generated the view I'm going to use my polyline solid tool and I'm just going to come in here really and I'm just going to draw a slab that I can use for glass. Set the thickness of it. You may use typically 3 8 inch for your glass. We'll set that at 3 8 and then you go back into your plan view you can see where this is drawn it's represented by the red color. I'm just going to grab that and I'm just going to slide it over where I want to position that. Once I have it in place I might pull that up a little bit. Now what's not showing in the plan view is the cap for the top of that wall. If you want to draw that you can come in here and you can use your uh, CAD tool and draw that cap in there. Let's go ahead and pull that about where we want it. This would just be for the purpose of showing it in your plan view. With your temporary dimensions you should be able to come in here and resize that. Let's go ahead and just pull it down and let's go ahead and click on this one and I'm just going to set that to be uh, five and a half. So now you can see that in your plan view and you can have that level of detail. If you want to put a fill on your glass you can do that as well. Back in the camera view you can see the shower. Turn that from a privacy We'll just use the uh, material eyedropper, pick that up off the window, and then you've got your glass. Now let's talk about how to put the materials on the shower. You can use the material eyedropper and pick up the material off the floor or in the library and apply it onto the wall. I don't like to do it that way because 
for your material takeoffs, I like to use the backsplash tool. So let me undo that. I'm just going to come up here and choose the uh, backsplash tool and I'm going to click on the wall. Let me return back to the floor plan view. I'm going to use the wall elevation tool. I'm going to cut a wall elevation right through that wall. In this elevation view, when the temporary dimensions are on, you can select the top portion of the backsplash, enter in, in this case, 48 inches. We can set that, and I want to do an inlay. I'm just going to use the backsplash tool again, come in here, draw one more backsplash. Again, use the temporary dimensions. In this case, we'll set this one to be 12 inches, and then we'll go ahead and do one more backsplash above that, up to the ceiling, and then to change that material for the inlay, for that middle backsplash, I'll open up my library, find the material, come over here and apply it. If you want to change the tile pattern in this vector wall elevation, there is a tool in the menu called Adjust Material Definition. Inside of this dialog, you can change your colors. You'll notice the colors right in here. You can adjust these to your preference for your vector style view. You can see the update. There is a material type. There's a few settings you can come in here to change the height and the width. You can make adjustments in here. And again, you see the preview update. There's other a couple other settings down here. On the pattern, panel, you can come in here and put an offset. So if you're needing installation instructions and you want to adjust this, you can see how it moves up and down with those offset values. The texture is actually the JPEG type image that you would get from the manufacturer if you've downloaded that from the website. And usually I try to make sure that these match the vector view and the perspective camera view. I'm going to cancel those changes because I'm going to change this material back in the 3D view. Now these can be shaped if you select this, if you want to shape it and create really any shape that you want in here. You're kind of unlimited to that. I'm just going to hit the undo button, but beware you can do those kinds of things. Now the next thing while we have this wall elevation open, let's go in and place our fixtures in here. I'm going to place the faucet valve and also the head in the elevation view. Let's go ahead and place both of these units. And once they're in placed, again you can use the center command. You select the object, use the center tool, and then I can center that valve and head right over one another. Now before I place the secondary set of valve and head, let's zoom out. I'm going to use the dimension tool to automatically place those dimensions so we can get it positioned exactly right. You'll find an automatic NKBA elevation tool which I'm going to use. I'm going to group select both of those objects and then I'll select the dimension. I'm going to set that to be 24 inches on the side of the wall. And notice I didn't get a centerline dimension going up and down. And probably because this faucet's buried into the backsplash, let's go back to the floor plan and turn on the backsplash layer and make the adjustment. Notice I don't have the backsplash layer on. That backsplash is probably set at a half inch. Let's turn that layer on and we'll make the adjustment accordingly. If you zoom in, you can kind of see where that is. Let's go ahead and just pull that out a half inch. And now I'll return back into that wall elevation. You can see now that valve is exposed. I'm just going to change my dimension default through my annotation set to do appliance and fixture center lines. And then I'll just use my center line tool itself. Zoom out here a little bit. And let's just create our own center line in here since we weren't able to do that initially. And I'll just pull that out to the side of the wall. And we'll make a few adjustments in here. This picked up the border for the backsplash. And I actually don't want that border on this side. I'll go ahead and do it on the other side. So there's our valve center line. Let's go ahead and make an adjustment for the valve. I'm going to set that to be 49 inches from the finished floor. And then also for the shower head itself, it's going to the center of the fixture, which if you want that to go to where it needs to be installed, a lot of times what I'm going to do is just use a small line. You could also use a CAD point. I'm going to come in here and just draw a line and I'll have my crosshairs on so it's easy to align that. So I can now adjust that center line. If you select this, you can drag that up there. You may lose your center line designation. I'll show you how to put that back on, but we'll adjust it there. And if you notice my centerline indication went off. When you highlight your dimensions, this is extension number three. And if I were to open up that dimension underneath the extensions and markers, come down, find extension number three, I can now mark that as a center line. Let's go ahead and come in here. When I ran that dimension, I actually ran it to the top of the sheetrock. Let's go ahead and pull that dimension off. Highlight the line itself and I want that to be 24 inches 
in the mounting and then I'll just pull the fixture down accordingly so that that lines up. But again, using your crosshairs makes that an easy process to line up when you want to have that on your line. Go ahead and pull that center line over the top and that's how I'll dimension those particular fixtures when it's trying to go to the center of the fixture. Now with both of those valve and faucet head lined up, let's go ahead and I'm going to shift select both of them. Use the copy tool. These should be 36 inches down or apart. I'm just going to slide that over, press my tab key, enter in 36, and then I can update my dimensions accordingly. You can always use that extra diamond, pull it over here onto the center, and then a lot of times what I'll do is I'll just pull this down into the uh, fixture itself. Again, since those fixtures were buried in the backsplash itself before I did this dimension, I now lost that center line. So let's open that up, extensions two and three, and I'll just change that to be a center line. Again, on your extensions and markers, number two, mark it as a center line and then number three that's faster than going back and redimensioning it and then on the bottom dimension let's also grab that if you want to pick it up from the bottom it may be duplicated we can pull that in here let's actually pull it into the center of the fixture and again notice it didn't pick up the center line so I'll need to just adjust that real quickly and mark it as a center line for extension number two I'll mark it as a center line and now those are appropriately marked again sometimes what I'll do is I'll pull this up if you want it into the fixture probably redundant since you have it on the top already I'm going to go ahead and change my dimension default annotate through the annotation set back to the NKBA general annotation and then I'm going to change my dimension tool to just the ruler and I'm going to come down here and run my dimension line and pick up that banding inlay of the backsplash and notice I probably picked up that sheetrock again at the very top so we'll just kind of zoom in here and remove that now the next thing I want to do in the shower is I want to take a look at putting a bench right in this area Let's go into our floor plan view and let's use a polyline solid to create that bench. Select the polyline solid. I'm going to come in here and snap onto the wall and come down here and basically place that bench right in this area right here. Using my temporary dimensions, let's go ahead and set that to be 15 inches. And then I want to set the height of this to be 17 inches. So we'll set the thickness at 17 and then also the floor to top at 17. Note you can do it from the finished floor or the sub floor. Next I'm going to select this end point of the polyline and I'm just going to pull it back until I get a snap which indicates a 45 degree angle. When I make this segment active by clicking on it there's a tool down in the edit menu to convert change line to arc and then you can actually come in here and you can move this around open that line segment up on the selected arc if you lock the cord the distance you can specify a radius let's go ahead and just put in 17 inches and then back in the floor plan overview camera you can see the bench let's use a material eyedropper let's pick up the material apply it to the bench as well as that wall now for the top of the bench we want to create a cap with a different material maybe the same material as the banding the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to create a copy of this and then pull it out a half inch So let's go back into the floor plan view now, there's a few ways to get this exact at a half inch I'm going to show you the trick that I use to do this underneath your preferences setting underneath your edit behaviors you can come in here and change this to concentric and actually put in 0.5 inches it's going to change the way your cursor looks when we do this select the bench use the copy in place so we've created a copy of it and then when you come in here and you resize this just, just pull this out just a little bit and it will snap in half inch increments so I've moved it out exactly half an inch let me undo that I'll show you another way to do it and I'll reset my preferences back let me hit undo I'm gonna go back into my preferences in here I'm gonna remove that concentric out back to default notice the half inch is still in here let's go ahead and select the bench use the copy in place and what I'll do in this case if we come in here we pull this out I'm gonna hold the letter C down on my keyboard and that's just gonna snap it at a half inch that way I don't have to go into my preferences all the time and make the change now while that moved it out at a half inch all the way around let's just snap this back to the original location on this side and I'm going to snap it back to the original location on this side and then let's make the adjustment we'll set the thickness to a half inch and then we'll set the floor to top at 17 and a half back into the 3d view grab our material eyedropper 
pick up the inlay tile material and apply it to the top and now I have a cap on top of that bench. Now one final detail for the plan view since that cap if I select the cap is on top and the bench is down below it sometimes what I like to use is a dashed line so let's go ahead and on the line style let's change that to a dashed line now to clean up the floor plan we turned on the backsplashes mainly to position the valve and the shower head I'm going to select the backsplash let's go ahead and turn that layer off there's a shortcut that I use down here called object layer properties and that will open up that exact item and you can easily turn that layer off now for the bench sometimes what I'll do is I'll put a fill on this what I'll do is I'll take for the fill style and I'll change it to be a solid and I'll change the color let's lighten that up a bit and I like to put a transparency so you can still see that dashed line down below it and then on the label for that polyline solid let's go ahead and put in the word bench that gives you a, uh, a nice label for your uh, for your shower bench. Next, let's go into the library, and I'm going to grab a strip drain. Now, one of the things that I do is I'll save some of my favorites that I use all of the time, and I don't have to search the broader library. Let's just go ahead and place it. And then also I'll grab a, a handrail and place that on the wall. Again, I don't have my backsplash on. But if you have your backsplash on, you're going to want to adjust that. Let's just zoom in. I'll pull it out just a little bit. Counts for that half inch backsplash on the wall. It may look a little odd in your floor plan view. If you want it to look good in your floor plan view, you can snap it back. But if you want it to look good in your camera view, you can then adjust it. And then the final thing, let's use our material eyedropper on here. Let's pick up the material and apply that onto the top cap. And then the last thing is let's use our material eyedropper and apply it onto the outside of this wall and on the end cap. So that's the process that I use in creating the shower using the half wall tool, using a polyline solid, and then you saw how we did the, uh, the fixtures and doing our dimensioning. The next thing is to take a look at placing our vanity cabinet, and let's place a couple of cabinets right in this area. I'm going to use my base cabinet to place my vanities in here. Let's come in here and place the first cabinet. Slide it over a little bit. Now, the reason it came in with the light materials and the certain countertop is that's my default. You want to make changes to your default. Let's make a change in here for the width on here. Let's go in and change the depth. Sorry, the depth. Set that to 21 inches. Once you've made changes to it, while the cabinet is still selected, there's a tool down here that I'll use. It says set as default. And that will set that as a default. Now when I place another cabinet, that's going to come in with that 21 inch depth. I'm going to resize this cabinet to a 21 inch cabinet. And I'm going to make some modifications to it. On the front of this cabinet, I'm going to go ahead and change this face item to a drawer. Choose that in the drop down list. And then using the split horizontal, I'll make the cabinet then a three drawer bank. One more cabinet for the sink base, and I'm going to resize this one to be a 36 inch cabinet. And on this cabinet, I want to go ahead and make a change and remove the drawer, highlight the face item, and press the delete key. Now, over in this area, right in between the wall and the bank of drawers, I want to go ahead and place a base cabinet filler. I'm going to return back to the floor plan view to do that. In the build menu, you'll find a cabinet filler for a base cabinet, and I'm going to just come in here and click and place that base filler. Now at this wall intersection where this cabinet is competing with this wall, you can actually change, if you don't want that overhang, that's a one inch overhang, if you want to change that overhang just for that cabinet, we could go in and on the right side of that cabinet, we could come in here and change that overhang. I'm going to set it to be a half inch for the right side, and you can see if that gives you the appropriate space at that intersection. Let's go into the library and place our vessel sink. Now to create a backsplash on those cabinets, if I select each one of these with a shift key, there's an option for the backsplash. And if I come in here and let's set it at 11 inches, you can set that backsplash. The problem is, is the backsplash actually doesn't go on the side of that cabinet. So I'll just hit undo. And I actually find those easier and more flexible to just use the backsplash tool, the same tool that we used on the shower and then you can make those look good in a wall elevation. So just grab the wall elevation tool, draw it through the wall. I'm going to highlight that backsplash and I'm going to use my temporary dimensions and we're going to set it at 11 inches. Next I want to use and create a mirror with polyline solid. Using, I just use this, it's easier to create those elements just by doing this, in my opinion, just 32 inches rather than if you're going to use a frameless one. And then I'll just go ahead and set that to be 72 and then you can go in and find your mirroring material. Now same thing with the mirror above the sink. If I come in here roughly 
And then I'm going to use the copy and place tool so I don't have to be too exact. I'm just going to pull a copy of that over here and we'll just snap it to the edge. Now one of the things if I open up my completed version, I've used a mirror material for that mirror over the sink and then I've used an illuminating component for the side light mirrors. And in the camera view, if I use the adjust materials definition and you, I painted it just a white color and then if you come over here onto the properties panel, I've set it to be emissive and I've changed it to be at 80%. You can see how glowing that is. It's pretty bright. And then I've changed it to have a transparency in there material to give it that certain glow that you see in the render view and just doing that. Group select them and then you can block them, add them into your library with the add to library in the bottom and then if I go back to the original floor plan you can grab that library component and place it in your design. So I've returned back to that plan. Here's a mirror light. You see the 2D representation. The 3D representation, come over here, place it in the design. And then you can see that back in the 3D camera, how it looks. Notice my reflection's on. Let's grab the material off of that mirror and apply it onto the mirror that we drew earlier. Let's go ahead and pull that up. If you've noticed that you don't have reflections on, and sometimes they can take more resources from your computer, if you go back into your floor plan view, you can see select your camera and one of the settings inside your camera right here is to show reflections. If I turn that off that's going to actually change that so you don't see reflections and sometimes you may not want to see those but that's where you can control that. I'm going to take those cabinets and let's use the copy tool and let's pull those over into the other side of the, the bath and then we'll go in and update our dimensions. Now back in the plan view, I'm just going to draw a marquee around the cabinets, the mirror, and the vanity. I'm going to skip the base filler. I'm going to use the copy and reflect about. This won't be exact because this is a kind of a interesting shaped room. I'm just going to pull those out over here and then I'm just going to slide them in and bump them against the wall in this direction and then also in this direction. Go back and grab our wall elevation view. And then I'm going to use the base cabinet tool and we're going to place a base cabinet right over in this area. Go ahead and slide it over and bump it. And let's go ahead and make a couple of adjustments in here. First of all, I want to just click on that face item and use the delete tool and create a set of open shelves. Close the dialog and then I'm just going to use a cabinet filler that will go into the space between the wall and that cabinet. Using the custom backsplash tool, I'm going to come in here and create a backsplash on the top of the cabinets. And I'm also going to create one off to this side over here next to this doorway where the tub will be. And now I'm going to use the dimension tool. I like to use the automatic NKVA dimension tool. It's not perfect when you have Windows and CAD, which is what that mirror is, but it's going to be a great way to get started. And then I'm just going to make my way around and do some cleanup. I'm not going to worry about the top line dimensions. Those are probably okay. Let's begin and zoom in on the side elevations. It's picking up the mirror and the casing. What I could probably do is figure out how to position those and make them the same. So I'm just going to pull that off the mirror and I'm going to also pull it off the door. Those are probably a couple of inches off. I'll dimension it on the door on the other side. Now in this case when you select the dimension you can see the diamond and what it's picking up and what it isn't. Again I'm going to pull that off the mirror. I'm just going to slightly pull it off. So a lot of times what I like to do is just pull that out so you can read that. Let's go along the bottom here. I picked up the mirror and the casing. Again, I'm just going to pull these dimension components off. You just select the diamond, pull it off. You don't have to pull it very far. You just pull it slightly off the object. And again, what I'm going to do for that base filler, I'm going to just kind of pull that in. A lot of times I'll hold my control key down. And when I place that sink, let's go ahead and use the dimension tool. Let's set that to be exactly 18 inches. Now there are manual dimension tools and if you are good at setting up defaults you can build your own dimension defaults and do that about as quickly. I like to use the automatic tool. Let's go ahead and close that elevation view. Now the next component in the video I want to place the remaining fixtures. The tub, the tub filler, and then the toilet. I browsed out into the Kohler catalog. Kohler has a very large catalog. If you scroll down here and I find the particular fixture that I'm after, you can come in here and place it. And I'm going to come over here and place that. And for the filler, and if you know the part number, let's uh, come in here and type in the part number, hit the search button. You can right click on it and say show in browser. That will show you exactly where that's at inside of the catalog. Let's go ahead and place that over here. And then finally, I'm just going to come down into my favorites and grab one of the uh, toilets that I use. 
and I'll just place that in the room right here. Let's change our dimension default back to the appliance and fixture center lines and then the actual tool itself you need to change back to center lines. I'm just going to zoom in here and I'm going to draw that center line right through that toilet and we'll also do it through the tub and pick that up and the pot filler or the uh, <laughs> tub filler. Make some adjustments in here. Again, if you want to move that to pick it up on the center line where it's actually going to be installed, then you can make those adjustments. A lot of times you're going to want this on the outside of your wall, but I have a lot of busy dimensions, so I'm just going to leave it. I'm going to use one more center line since we need to center line that center of the tub, and I'm not going to pick up that faucet because it's too far away. What I'm going to do is go ahead and select the dimension, grab the extra diamond, pull it onto the center of that. Maybe we can select that label and pull it around off to the side. So that gives us our dimensions we need for the filler, the tub, and the toilet. And again, if I zoom in, if the center line is needs to go exactly to the drain, you notice that it does on this side, it's going to the center of the fixture. You can always use your line tool and draw a line, and then you can adjust that dimension by pulling that diamond over onto that element and then you have it exactly what you need to for your center line information. Again, for cosmetic purposes, I probably pull that center line right over the top of that line and position a little better than I have here for the video. The last portion of the video, I want to take a look at creating the construction drawing through the layout page. My completed version on the screen shows floor plans, elevation views, a cabinet schedule, some notes, and a rendering. Let's go in and take a look at the work we've already done and create the layout sheet. In the floor plan view, the first thing you want to do is make sure that you have the right layer set. And I'm using the kitchen and bath layer set. This turns on things that you want and don't want through your layers. So for example, for my windows and doors, there are labels turned on. I'm going to select the window and I'm going to select the door. I'm going to go into those layer properties and turn off those labels. I don't want to see those in my floor plan. I'm just going to come in here, turn off the door labels, turn off the window labels. Once I have the exact view that I want to send to the layout sheet, I'll come over here and choose send to layout. And then underneath the scaling, I'm going to come in and send it out at a half inch scale. That sent it out to the blank layout that I have. And many times I'll have text already in my template plan so I don't have to recreate the callouts and text descriptors. Let's go ahead and slide this into place just above the text. Return back to the floor plan. And I'm going to open up the camera that we created for the shower. And then again through the file menu, send a layout. Let's go ahead and send that out also at a half inch. And then I'll just position that again right above the text call out that I already have in my plan for the shower elevation. And then again one more time back to the floor plan. And I'm going to grab the sink elevation we created earlier and we'll send that out to the layout again at a half inch scale. And I'm just going to pull that up into the uh, corner up here. Now I'm working with a 24 by 36 sheet of paper. A lot of times you may be using an 11 by 17 template and you won't have as many components on your layout sheet. Now I'm going to skip the rest of those elevations. We didn't draw those in the plan, but I do want to show you how to create the cabinet schedule. In your floor plan view, the, way, the place that I create these are in a CAD detail. Let's go into CAD detail management. And I create these in a separate space. So I'll create one and give it a good descriptor. And this opens up a workspace inside of your floor plan. Now under the tools, let's go into the tools and choose cabinet schedule. Now this schedule is going to come in with the defaults that I've selected. You'll see that I have a 3D elevation and then the different columns I've selected. Notice when I click on it, I can actually move things around. I'm going to move this sink base up. Notice that since it has a vessel sink on it, it doesn't have the label of sink base on it. Let's go ahead and go back into the floor plan and make a change for that. I'm going to select both sink bases and inside the cabinet dialog under the object information panel for the description, let's just come in here and give it a sink base description. And inside your cabinet schedule, you'll notice over here in the description, it gives it a more definitive than just a base cabinet. Now notice the nomenclature in here. There's a number. You notice in the floor plan back here, we're showing just the call out in here. If you want to go back to the nomenclature, that's controlled through the schedule. On the label panel, you can come in here and remove this check mark. Use call out for label. And then when you go back into your floor plan, you'll see that that nomenclature is now returned. Sometimes what I like to do with that nomenclature. Notice as you zoom in you see my base filler. If you select the component there's a small diamond in here. You can actually pull that out and make it so it's more readable. 
Now before I send this out to the layout sheet, I want to remove a couple of columns. I've only isolated this to a single room. And notice that there's a floor column in here, really not appropriate. I'm going to go in and remove that column out of the schedule. On the general panel, we can come in here and we can remove any column that you don't want. So I'm going to remove a couple more in here. I'm going to remove the label out, and then I'm also going to remove comments out. I'm going to go ahead and send that out to the layout sheet. And in this case, I'm going to go ahead and send it out at a quarter inch scale. Then I'm going to see if I can actually position it down here below the floor plan. And I'm going to crop off those base fillers simply by coming in here and using the crop tool. Sometimes what I like to do is actually import the tiles and materials that I use for the design. And the way I do that is I have those materials in a folder, usually in a materials folder underneath the project file. I'll grab both of those materials and I'll drag those into the layout sheet. And typically they come in very large. I'm just going to go ahead and select those images and resize them. We'll just set a size that's more appropriate. And then the other thing I do is I always mark save in plan and I'll mark the quality at 100%. And I'll just repeat that process. The other one, again, save in plan, 100% quality, and then I'll resize that to uh, two and a half inches. And then from here, it's just a matter of kind of coming in and arranging them the way you want using the text tool in here and putting in your description of what that material is. And then I just do the same thing for the other one. Now the floor plan notes, typically I'll either put those in just with a text object right in the layout sheet or sometimes I'll leave that in the floor plan and just put that on the text layer for the bathroom. I have a 3D view. This is a ray trace view and if you want to ray trace that you can drag that in just the way we did for the tile materials. If you want to send a regular render camera out, once you generate your 3D view, once you position your view the way you want it, you can then send that out to your layout sheet, go to send a layout, under the camera options, I usually use the live view update always, which means if the camera style changes, remember you could change this to a watercolor view or a line drawing view. There's no scaling to these perspective views. And then you can send it out to page two on your layout sheet. Now when it's on your layout sheet, let's go ahead and move this around up into the corner. I'll usually crop this in with the crop handles in here to kind of isolate the particular portion of the view that I want to focus on. And then you can kind of slide that over until you get it. Now any of these views, if you double click on them, will immediately open up your plan to that particular element. And it's a great way to work. So if you want to open up this elevation view, you just double click on it and it opens it up immediately to that view. So if you've used different layer sets for an electrical plan or you've got an interior layer set, it's a great way to just go in there and double click and do your work environment that way. Well that wraps up the end of the construction drawings and the overall video. You can get a closer look at this plan set by downloading them from the website. And to kind of summarize what we went through in the video, we started out with creating the shell and footprint of the plan. We went through then and created our shower using the half wall tool, placed the fixtures, did our wall elevation, and then we concluded it by creating our construction drawings. Thanks for watching the video.